everyone, it's Ivan, KitBadger.com, out here for another gear review, and today, talking packs. This one right here by Mystery Ranch, which is the TerraFrame 65. Mystery Ranch has a number of different pack designs, some pretty tailored with respect to who they're meant for, like they have a whole line of military packs, they have a lot of packs for hunting, and this one right here is kind of general, kind of outdoor backpacking pack. But with this TerraFrame 65, what they did do is kind of incorporate some of the things, such as their overload, I guess, feature, that was built into some of the other packs made for carrying really heavy loads, comprising of, among other things, carbon fiber stays with suspension to allow you to ultimately carry something relatively comfortable up to about 150 pounds which is a significant amount of weight but basically using the suspension system you can absolutely do it and so that's been incorporated into this pack here right here are those carbon fiber stays i was talking about and then we have some riser straps on both of these shoulder straps to include a sternum strap which you can move up and down depending on kind of the fit you're looking for and then back here, you kind of see these graduated lines and this piece actually basically kind of nests back inside here. You can actually pull it away and it's Velcro backed and slide this up or down depending on kind of where you want the ride height of your shoulder straps to go. And then moving down, nice, soft, comfortable lumbar support. And then this is kind of sectioned off in these different pieces, which, in use actually makes for a really comfortable ride with respect to this hip belt and then around the sides you have basically kind of like almost pals webbing where you can attach things depending on what you may want to put there and then the way it actually clasps in the front or actually sizes more with the use of these buckles is pretty clever and works well I'll show you more on that in a second with the waist strap once you buckle it you come back to these sizing pieces and you pull them respectively and it basically shortens it up and cinches it down. And because of basically physics and mechanical advantage, for me personally, it's way easier to cinch this down than kind of conventional ones where they actually come back and you're trying to pull away from the actual buckle in the middle. Allows you to get your hip belt really nice and tight. Then usually in practice, when I take this off, I'll go ahead and loosen the sides. Not that you can't do it later, but then I'll go ahead and undo that and yeah, drop the pack, put it back on, repeat the process, cinch it down and good to go. As far as ways to kind of compress your load that you're carrying, lots of opportunities. On both sides, you have these two side compression straps right here. You also have two bottom compression straps and then if we undo these to get access and remove this lid on top, we also have two more compression straps to basically pull this down. And in addition to that, there are internal compression straps as well. But right now we'll go over kind of, yeah, where you can actually pack stuff in this. Right here is the pack lid. On both sides, you have these daisy chains, which if you want, you can secure something, probably something fairly light up there. And then this, basically I've already undid that and undid these back section where it actually attaches. So you can pull this whole lid off and stow it in here. It's basically convertible. You can turn this into a little kind of day pack of sorts. And this up here, there's basically one large compartment. Keep random stuff, maybe some salami, silencer, sunscreen other things like that but basically stuff you kind of want to have access to like the aforementioned on the top of the pack we have these compression straps which we can undo and then we have this drawstring closure at which point this opens up and we can pretty much start digging through if we want or conversely if we're packing this we can go ahead and pack things directly down Kind of a mixed bag with respect to a closure or opening like this depending on what you like what i do like about this pack is there's another way to access or pack gear in on either side of the pack down here we have these 
elastic water bottle holders fit a Nalgene bottle, pretty much anything else dimensionally or smaller. And then if we look kind of at the outside of the pack, we have a daisy chain that runs down. You can attach things to include this guy if you want to attach tools to include this loop down here, ice axe, something like that. And then you can see we have two pockets, one on either side here. And those can access either zipper up, zipper down. You have two zippers. I usually keep them up, but you can zip it open, get access to whatever you have in there. Quick access without having to actually dive into the center of your pack. But as I mentioned, aside from that top loading, we can also access other things. And to do so, we need to undo our compression straps on the sides as well as on the bottom. And again, we have two zippers to access. I usually keep them up. One nice thing with the compression straps, you basically have to undo them to access stuff. So if this zipper starts working down, your compression straps hopefully are still keeping things inside your pack in your pack. But this zipper basically will go around, around the compression strap and take these other ones off. And we can basically unzip this entire lid and then fold this back, giving us access to whatever we may have in here. No backpacking trip is ever very light for me. This is usually going. Camera, batteries, audio equipment, stuff like that. But the ability to have that there, first of all, this does not like slipping down through that top opening, but being able to actually open the pack up, drop things in there, and then also open the pack up and access them, rather than having to pull everything out to include stuff I have right here, that for me is pretty big. The pack itself is made out of 330D Light Plus Cordura, and the zippers are all YKK and coated for water resistance. Another thing I like about this pack is you have options in that you don't need to use the pack. I talked about the frame earlier, right? So we can access back here. There's a clip. Undo that clip. And then undo these buckles, which are basically right here. I'd already pre-loosened them. But basically this webbing comes up, goes through there, and loops back to secure it in there. And once we remove that, nope, it's impossible. Just kidding. Okay, it actually is impossible. Once that's undone, this, oh, we also need to unclip this from our pack. And then, we can remove this tail basically, which comes up under the frame right here and clips in right there. And this frame itself, again, has all that load carrying ability, I think 150 pounds. So they actually make some pretty awesome accessories, which lets you use this frame with set accessories and carry all kinds of kind of unconventional loads where maybe the pack bag isn't the best solution. This is incredibly flexible. I actually took this on, I think, a couple different backpacking trips with my boys, once up to Panama City, once up to Revit Lake, and ended up using the pack strap. Mystery Ranch makes it, and it basically is kind of like a load carriage system. So you have a piece that comes under the bottom, again, attaches the same way as your regular pack does, but then it comes up and around, and it has numerous compression straps, for these here to go ahead and buckle in and cinch down. So it pretty much opens the door for you to load this thing however you want. Like you can strap an elk quarter to it. You can put a five gallon like fuel can on here, like whatever you want to do. And so usually the way I'll do it is I'll put like my sleeping bag and like a waterproof compression sack and then maybe my camera gear or in between my camera gear and sleeping bag. Lots of times what I'll do is Mystery Ranch also makes basically waterproof bags. And so I'll throw everything. I don't want to get wet in there. 
and wrap that thing up, throw that there, throw my camera gear there, throw sleeping pad, tripod, whatever it may be, and then connect those compression straps, cinch it down, and I'm off. And it's pretty nice, and it kind of cuts both ways. On the one hand though, what it does is gives you flexibility for maybe you want to carry something like pretty light, like this frame's super light, and then with the pack strap, you can put however little or however much you want. So you can go really heavy or you can go really light, lighter than like that 4,000 cubic inch pack from the TerraFrame 65. Or again, go heavier. The one thing I will say is when you don't have like the actual pack bag on here, you miss some nice things like water bottle holders, stuff like that. But you can, of course, go ahead and use this like PALS webbing here and put water bottle holders on there so that you can gain those back. But I appreciate the flexibility and ultimately the options. With all that said, how have I used this? Well, I've taken on quite a few backpacking trips. Some of those trips using this actual pack and then sometimes pulling it off and basically just using the frame with that uh, pack strap and kind of loading it up however I see fit. In my use, it's done a really good job for me. Kind of, kind of worked through some different things as far as, for example, like carrying my camera. Like it's a big box at the end of the day and doesn't fit very well coming down from the top. I do like the fact that I can unzip this whole thing and get access to it or the other way of using it with the pack strap is, yeah, like basically it's exposed. And since it's waterproof case, works great. I can just go ahead and throw it on there and strap it on and go. In my use, is there anything I don't really care for about this pack? Yes, kind of just one thing. And in my adventures thus far, I have not taken this somewhere where I need to bring my ice axe. So I have yet to actually like put tools or anything kind of center line here, which I can appreciate putting something center line there because like weight distribution, things like that. But I haven't done that. And I have these two pouches kind of on either side. And so it usually comes down to like this balance thing, like, uh, what can I put over here to basically even out what I have in this other side over here? So I'm trying to maintain like the balance of my pack, right? And obviously this is made so you can have tools and stuff centerline. I get it. Having not done that, personally, I would rather either have one kind of shallower large pouch here or even a smaller one and then another one below it, something along those lines, but sample size of one. Overall, in fairness, this pack has done a great job. If you're looking for a large, well-built pack that offers a lot of flexibility, I would take a look at the TerraFrame 65. It is definitely not a ultralight pack. I wanna say the pack weighs a little over five pounds, but about 4,000 cubic inch as far as volume goes. So you can fit a lot of stuff in here, maybe sometimes more than you should have put in here. but it's really nice, especially for me, having my two boys and going backpacking with them, being able to basically carry the lion's share of what we need and spread load kind of the other stuff. Plenty of room for that. Or if you're gonna go on extended adventures and you need that space because you're gonna be gone for a while. Not to mention just the flexibility, especially dipping over kind of the hunting side, being able to take the pack off, like the actual pack body off, and throw that pack strap on and hike out quarters, out quarters, things along those lines. A lot of flexibility there. I think it's pretty cool. While they do make a number of packs actually here in the US, mainly kind of their military ones because of berry compliance, this one is actually made in the Philippines. And price wise, you're looking at about 400 bucks. Is it expensive? At a certain level, you pay for what you get. And if you are kind of just like fair weather backpacker, like maybe I want to dip my toes in it, this might not be the pack for you. But if you're going to go actually spend seasons, put in miles, then no, like it is good to get good gear that is actually sized to you, is comfortable, that's going to actually carry a load well. Those things get really important really quick. 
And overall, I've been really pleased with this pack. But if you want to pick one up, you can do so directly through Mystery Ranch. They're actually located kind of my neighbors over in Montana, I guess. But yeah, they make some pretty solid stuff. And if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, picking up KBAT target pads, stickers, patches, things like that, or supporting me directly through Patreon. All that stuff helps me go out and create more content for you. And yeah, I appreciate the support. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.